your state. That is the law that they have to be able to participate. And a lot of the homeschooling families that we know, that's exactly what they do. They just do their schooling at home, but then they are involved in some of the extracurricular activities that the school does provide as far as sports and that kind of stuff. So it's not like your children have to be left out of everything if they choose to do that. For us, the way that it works is that you do have to register your student through your local county school board, and I'm pretty sure that's probably standard throughout the entire country. But here in Florida, that's definitely what you have to do. The age is different everywhere. For us in our county, we could not register our kids as a homeschooling student until they were six. That's when they were allowed to start kindergarten as far as our county was concerned. And every year, at the end of the year, I have to have my children evaluated by a certified school board teacher. So for those of you who are worried that, oh, well, they don't get an education and nobody's checking up on them, that's simply not true. We do have to have an evaluation at the end of the year, and the certified teacher has to make sure that she or he feels comfortable with where they are academically, that they are to be promoted to the next grade. So they do take caution to make sure that that's happening. And you do have to keep all of your paperwork, your testing, any activities that they have done because at any moment I can get a call from my school board and they can say I want to see the portfolio I want to see the work and I have to provide that at a moment's notice so you know I know that some people get scared well they're just home and they don't do anything and I know yes there are families who do take advantage of it I've known people who've told me that their parents would keep them home to homeschool and then just work them all day long out in the garden and just kind of being their little slaves. And like I said a little earlier, there's always going to be abuses to everything, no matter what it is. You're going to have people who take advantage of the system no matter what it is. So yes, there are people who may take advantage of the homeschooling system, but most of us actually do it right. And most counties do stay on top of it to make sure that your kids are well prepared and academically ready to move on. So that's kind of the reason behind it and how we do it. My kids get up and they typically start school most days about 10 o'clock. We're not super rigid with schedules because being in ministry, sometimes, you know, you just never know from day to day what may come up and what you may need to do to help another family or different things. And so the great thing for us about homeschooling is that we can adjust our schedule. If something were to happen this morning and I would have had to leave for a couple of hours, then my kids could come home this evening and do their school in the evening. There have been times when we literally have been doing our homeschooling at midnight before just because of the scheduling and the way things had happened. So it's very flexible as far as that's concerned. But we have always tried to at least maintain somewhat of a schedule the best we could. The last three or four years has been crazy with all of our home construction. So we would just kind of fit school in as we could. But for the most part, when they were young, especially, we tried to have it very structured for them as best as, as, best as I could anyway to make it an, a situation where they were learning discipline and all that. So now they get up and they start their school every day around 10, sometimes 10.30. And my son usually finishes classes around 2.30. And my daughter, she usually works up until about 4, maybe 5 o'clock because she's doing a little extra work this year to have it all done before graduation and all that kind of stuff. She's trying to work ahead a little bit. So... Uh, that's that's how it goes. It's a full day for them. I am not quite as involved in their schooling anymore. If they have questions for me, things that they're just not understanding on those videos, then I sit down and help them with that. I do still grade most of the tests. I still have to send those tests in. Some of the tests I have to grade and then some of the tests they actually grade at the academy. So as far as that's concerned, I do have to keep up with that, check their work, read all their compositions and their letters that they have to write, their, any of their papers that they have to do. Um, that I do read and, and correct with grammar and that kind of stuff. But as far as my actual involvement day to day, it has definitely decreased drastically since they hit high school because now they kind of school with Abeka Academy. So... 
Is it something that I would recommend to all of you guys? Yes, definitely. Is it something that I think that all of you should do? No, definitely not. Homeschooling, I think, is a great option, but I think that it has to be done for a right reason and a right motive. And it really is not going to be for every family. For some of you, sending your kids to, to a school, whether it's at a public school or a private school, is going to be the best choice for you. There are others of you that homeschooling is going to be the best option for you and your children, and you as a parent need to make that choice. It is not up to your children because most of your kids are going to tell you when they're little that they want to go to school. They want to be with their friends every day. They're going to hear their friends talking at church or in the neighborhood about things that are happening at school and blah, blah, blah. So. It's really, you need to remember always, and, and we'll probably do a Cocoa and Cookies on parenting, but you need to remember you are the parent, and God has entrusted you with the stewardship of your kids until they are old enough to make cognitive decisions on their own that are really going to be in their best interest, and we all know that small children cannot do that. And so it's something that you guys as a family need to discuss, you and your spouse. If you are a single parent, then it's something that, you know, counsel with a pastor, counsel with some friends who are homeschooling, some other people in your, in your sphere of influence that can offer you wisdom and help you to look at things from a bunch of different perspectives. I don't think it's a decision that needs to be made lightly, and I don't think it's a decision that you need to feel guilted into just because other people are doing it. I think that it's a very individual decision that definitely takes a lot of prayer and a lot of consideration before you just jump into it because it is a huge responsibility. It is something that you're going to have to be committed to doing every single day. It is something that you're going to have to make sure that you are putting time and effort into because you are educating your children. You're giving them everything that they need to function in life as adults when they get older and that is certainly nothing to take lightly. So it's nothing to be afraid of. It's once you get in the groove, like once we got into about two months of my daughter's kindergarten year and you just kind of got in the swing of things and got in the groove, it really was not hard at all. There were days of frustration, sure, whenever they might not have been catching on to something and, and you stop and you think, you know, I'm not a teacher. I don't really know the best way. And in those moments, I would literally just stop and pray. And I would say, okay, God, I don't know a creative way to help them grasp this concept. And I just, I really need your help. Give me some creative thoughts here. Please help me to know how to best teach them this concept. And the amazing thing is he would. You know, there were times that we would get done at the end of the school day. And I would be amazed at how God had helped me to help them by helping me create little jingles and songs. Sometimes we would put things to song and to music to help them remember things. And it just, I would always be amazed when we were done because I knew that this was nothing in my own strength that I did. And I knew it was a total answer to prayer that God had helped me to be able to do it. And like I said, Actually, this is going to be a three-parter because we've gone so long now. I don't want to put all this information up for you at one time. So we will do three separate sections. But next, next time, or on week number three, I do want to let you hear from my kids. So you guys can go ahead and submit any questions down below that you're going to want them to talk about. Just in case we're not able to be live on the day that they do that. Uh, because with their schooling schedule, I'm not sure that we're going to be able to do that one on a live broadcast, but we'll try our best. But go ahead and start listing some questions for us down below that you would like to hear their answers on. And I'm going to allow them to be 100% honest with you. We're not going to rehearse these answers. I'm not going to make them say something to, to paint homeschooling as this great thing. I'm going to let you them answer you as honestly as they want to to tell you what their experience has been with the homeschooling so that you guys can have more well-rounded information before you make your decision. Um, I will just make 
this statement and this is just my opinion you can take it for what it's worth reject it if you don't like it receive it if you do like it it's nothing that i want to create an argument about or have arguments down in the in the conversation thing because i will delete anything that's super hateful and all that i don't put up with that on this channel but my feeling and my perspective on things as i am watching what's happening right now in our public school setting is there is this huge push towards tolerance and there is this huge push towards educating in ways that really have nothing to do with basic education for our kids and it's dangerous. There is a huge push towards accepting everything really except for people of Christian faith. If you are people of other types of faith, then we are going to include you and we're going to tolerate you. But if you're a Christian, by golly, don't mention that. Don't say that. We're not tolerant of you at all. And it is becoming a very hostile environment in most of our schools. And I know that firsthand because my husband, part of his job here at our Sheriff's Department is overseeing all of our school resource officers. And he has a lot of contact every day with what is happening inside our public schools. And it's, it's a scary environment, I'll tell you. It is scary. And there's a lot of things that go on that a lot of parents are never made aware of because our school system is trying its hardest to take your authority from you as a parent. It is trying its hardest to make the state the guardian of our children. And there are things that are happening in those public schools that you will never know about unless you have great communication with your kids and they're open with you and come home and tell you some of the things that are going on. Most of your kids are probably going to tell you when they, they're little that they don't want to homeschool because of different reasons. But it is up to you to make the choice that is the best for them overall. Whatever that decision is, whatever you feel is going to be the most beneficial. And that's just... That's just how I feel about it. I don't think there can be a cookie cutter answer. I don't think every family is cut out to be a homeschooling family by any stretch of the imagination. So just because I'm a homeschooling mom, don't feel like I'm judging you if you're not, because I'm certainly not. And I certainly do understand that the dynamics of every family is a little different. But I would caution you to at least be careful on the educational choices of your kids. Because like I said, there is so many things that's going on right now and a whole push to restructure the thought processes of the children that doing some research and making the best if you can't homeschool a private school might be the option for you uh, get them to a a school board in a county I mean if you have to make a move and do what's best for your kids when they're little. Unfortunately, so many people look out for themselves. They look out for materialistic gain, what's going to be the best job, and all these kind of decisions that they let govern their lives that really, in a lot of cases, the children go lacking. And I think we're seeing the result of that in our culture and in our country and with some of the chaos that is ensuing right here in America because... We have not always put the right priorities where they should have been. One thing that I like to say is that way back years ago when the Constitution was written and whenever all of our governing papers were written, we had a right to an education because so many people had been denied the opportunity to learn and to grow and to be literate. And so it was a situation to where we're going to make sure that everyone has the right. If they want to be educated, if they want to learn, if they want to read and write and be able to do arithmetic, we're going to make sure that they are covered and protected under that. But somehow through the years, it has morphed into this thing to where now our government, I am totally not all about big government. I'm just not. But our government seems to trying to be increase its sphere of authority. And it is trying to realign this thing called education and we have to be careful with that because it can be real dangerous and you have to look out for the betterment of your kids you just have to so that's my story on the whole beginning processes of homeschooling like I said this has turned out to be a lot longer than I thought it was going to be there's a lot to say about this subject and really so much more that I could say 
If I didn't cover anything or answer a question, please comment down, down below. Join the conversation. I'll be happy to answer that for you down in the comments. But I am going to go ahead and split this off into three segments. I'm going to post two of those segments today, but I want to break the videos up to where they're not quite so long because I know it's kind of hard sometimes for you to sit there for a real long video. So look for the second one later on this evening. It'll just be probably entitled Homeschooling Part 2 or something like that. And then next week, we will pick up with my kids and let them answer your questions. So go ahead and submit your questions down below. Anything you want to know from my children. If you have teenagers or younger kids that, you know, you've talked about homeschooling and they have questions and concerns, let them comment that down below. And I would love to have my kids speak to them and answer those questions for them. So I want to thank you guys so much for enduring this one. This was a long one, so long we're going to have to split it up. But I do appreciate you sitting through it. I appreciate you joining me every week for Cocoa and Cookies. I've been having a lot of fun with this series, and I hope you guys have been too. I can't wait for some of the live interactions that I'm going to get to have with you guys coming up here real soon. But I hope you all have a great Monday. Don't forget to look out for part two just a little bit later this afternoon and have a great day. Uh -huh.